thanks for watching. My name is Mel Colley from melcolley.com and I just wanted to share with you a little test today that I do on some clients that have issues with their superficial back line and plantar fascia. So the superficial back line from the anatomy trains here by Thomas Myers is, as you can see from this poster here, the blue line represents the fascia. So we're used to talking about muscles in the body, 600 muscles having origins and insertions. So where your bicep starts and ends, where your tricep starts and ends, um, and where your quad start and end, hamstrings, things like that. So we are now kind of coming around to the way of thinking that it's been like this for quite a long time, but the research is now kind of starting to come down to the mainstream, filtering its way down into the mainstream side of fitness and talking about myofascial release, foam rolling and things like that. So looking at it from anatomy training's point of view and the research that Thomas Myers has been involved in, he first worked with Ida Rolf on this many years ago. The superficial backline starts down here underneath your toes and there's, a quite, a, there's um, quite a few different lines of fascia the superficial back line is just one that I'm showing you today um, so it starts all the way down here and it, I don't know if you can see that underneath all the toes um, starting at the plantar surface of the toe phalanges I love that word phalanges um, it's just great just means the toes and then coming underneath the foot and onto the back of the heel and going all the way up the back of the leg hamstrings, the pelvis, and as you can see, it trains all the way up the back. So it covers the whole of the spine, actually comes up over the neck and over the back of the head. Comes all the way back over and onto the forehead. So when people say they've got tight hamstrings, it's not necessarily the muscle that is an issue, it can be elsewhere in the body. And a great way to release it is by um, actually doing some massage on your head, or on your forehead. Sounds a bit strange, yes? Massaging your forehead to release your hamstrings. Well, there you go. But it works. <laughs> Believe me, because I have tight hamstrings. And the first time I had this done, uh, my, my right hamstring, which is my tightest on my tightest side, felt as if it had just dropped uh, by about an inch or so. So it felt great. So it's um, a good technique. Um, but what I'm going to show you today is something you can do for your plantar fascia. You get very tight plantar fascia, um, with the foot everts as it rolls outwards or inverts as it rolls inwards, which affects obviously the knee and the hip, and especially if you're a runner and you tend to run in the same, um, uh, you say in the same same way. You kind of like RSI. It's like being on a typewriter on on a typewriter. That sounds makes me sound old. On a computer, on a keyboard, and you get RSI um, from repetitive strain. You're always running in the same way, not changing your gait or not changing the way you run. So you're always going to aggravate the same thing, the same injury time and time again. So, taking a tennis ball or a golf ball, what I'm going to do is start against the wall first. Okay, so we're just going to roll down. I'm just going to stand up against the wall. We don't have to stand up against the wall. You can stand against the wall, um, away from the wall, that's fine. And just roll yourself down, just into a um, forward bend. And just make note of your hands. Let's put these down for a sec. And if <laughs> and if one arm is longer than the other. Now, if you do, if you're um, a personal instructor, a PT instructor, personal training instructor, Pilates instructor, yoga instructor, something like that, just see you have the difference in the line in the back. If one side is tighter than the other, it might be more of a pull on one side or more of a pull on the other. And looking at the difference in the arms as well, I'm seeing if one arm is actually longer than the other. And you see there's a slight difference there in mine. And then taking a tennis ball, now if you're, if, you've, uh, if you're a little bit on the tougher side, you might be able to handle the golf ball. It's a little bit more painful, I'm warning you. And just rolling it underneath the foot. <laughs> taking it underneath the balls of the big toe and all of the toes along the foot, taking it back to the heel as well. So you're in like a triangle, but also going into the middle of the foot. And taking about two minutes on each foot. Now fascia's like, um, fascia's like wallpaper paste. <laughs> the, um, if you ever mix wallpaper paste, if you mix it quite quickly, you don't really get much of a result. You have to mix it quite slowly. Fascia is the same. The quicker you move, try to um, the quicker you try to massage fascia or try to manipulate fascia, the lesser result you're going to get. So it's quite a slow and controlled 
movement. And it's quite sharp in some areas, you're going to feel that. So obviously if you've, if you've had any surgery underneath your foot, it's just not recommended. <laughs> and if you're not sure about it, and if you're seeing a physio, then go and check with them before you do anything like this, okay? So I don't want to put you into any more injury or pain. Um, but if you don't have to use a goggle, you can actually use your fingers or your knuckles and really get in there. But that's quite a lot of work to get really deep into the fascia. So you're applying a little bit of pressure onto the ball, because if you didn't, it will just roll away. And obviously the tennis ball is your option. Making sure you get the whole of the foot It's just funny how it kind of works, how it releases the whole of that back line coming all the way up. So you might find that people who do have plantar fascia issues usually have got uh, tight hamstrings, they feel tightness here, and they're maybe in the back of the knee or at the top part of the hamstrings by the base of the pelvis. Uh, maybe have uh, an orthotic posture, anterior tilt, and could have a forward head posture as well. As the cervical spine usually mirrors what the lumbar spine is doing. Had enough of that? <laughs> Before you do the other side, we're going to compare sides and you can see how lifted that foot feels compared to the other foot which we haven't touched yet. Okay, let's put those back up there. Itchy foot. Okay, so just feel how, how lifted. If you have a look down at your feet, you might be able to see more of an arch on that side now. It feels uh, much more springy, like a trampoline, which is how it should feel. Okay, and then roll yourself back down and compare sides again. Have someone to check. You always get, if you're doing this on your own, can I get a little camera and take photographs, put your little phone on a tripod or something, film it. And compare or get someone to do it for you and compare the length of the arms when you're down there to see how different it feels focus on your back and see how it differs on the right how different it feels on the right side and the left side so my right shoulder feels more open and freer now um, whole of my right hip feels more open and I feel quite tight and restricted on my left side um, so I'm not going to bore you and go through the left side with you, but obviously do your left side as well and see how different that feels. So obviously one side's going to be tighter than the other. Okay, so have a little play around and let me know how you get on. Leave a little message underneath here if you're watching this on YouTube or send me a message on my website at nailcolly.com.